welcome to yet another episode of Friday Night Chill with Will. I'm Will. Hope you guys have been having a good week. Mine's been pretty okay. A lot better than last week, or the week before, whenever that was. Uh, a lot of shenanigans have been happening the past couple weeks, but we're past it, and we're here, so that's fun. So, tonight, we're talking about X-Men, because uh, I finished rewatching the old show finally uh, and so I'll, I'll give my thoughts on that but then i also just finished watching episode five of x-men 97 so i'm fully caught up on x-men 97 and i have a lot of thoughts about that because oh my god that was a that was a lot that was a lot so yeah let, let's go ahead and uh let, let's talk about the original show first uh because it wasn't so much a rewatch as much as it was just kind of watching the entirety of it for the first time. Because I, I did watch it in the 90s, but if I'm honest with you guys, I do not recall most of what happens in that show or most of what happened in that show. Um, you know, I remember a little bit about um, Bishop and, you know, like the, the, time, the, the time machine and all that stuff. Yeah, little bits here and there, but there was a lot in this show that I did not know. And I'm actually really glad I watched it before I jumped into X-Men 97. I think you can watch X-Men 97 without really watching the old show, but um, there's definitely a lot more to appreciate. It's like it's like every Marvel fucking or DC or any comic book thing nowadays. If, if you do the homework, you, you know, there's more to enjoy for you. So, yeah, um, the the old show, overall, I, I'd say I had a good time, but I will say the last few episodes of the show are very rough. So, at, at least in, in my experience, because, so, when you get to, like, season four, there's, like, a certain order that the episodes show in on Disney Plus and I guess pretty much every media release the show has ever had. Um, and the order that it's in is not really correct because apparently after season three of the show back in the 90s, um, they just aired episodes out of order because it was a Fox Kids thing. Um, so yeah, they, they were just thrown on random episodes of season four and... I guess it was also partly because animation for certain things wasn't ready um, and it didn't mean their, meet their deadlines. So they were just kind of throwing what was ready on air. So um, the, the order isn't like crazy um, different. It's just like a few multi-parters are like flipped um, and uh, a few episodes here and there come after ones that should really come before an episode, you know? It, it's just a couple weird anomalies in there. And then I in the last season, um, I guess season five was not originally planned. Um, and so they added them at the end. And the original animation studio wasn't available to do it so they had to get a new animation studio to animate it and i gotta tell you guys it's not very good it was giving it was giving like home video release for a movie um back in the 90s um for a royalty-free version of a fairy tale movie that, that was kind of the vibe i got so it's not great, and the, the episodes themselves, the six... So, there's m more than just the six that make up season five, because Disney Plus has, like, one of the arcs categorized on in season five. Um, but I, I'm not too sure about the specifics on how exactly that works, but, like, the last six are where it changes. And they're just random, like, I feel like you get a very satisfying, like, four-parter that involves Apocalypse and all that. And then you get to the last six episodes, and it's 
none of that really. It's kind of a, a bunch of random one-off episodes, uh, including one that is, I guess, supposed to be a Mr. Sinister uh, origin story. And it's just weird because it's just like, it's five episodes of like random shit. And then you get to the sixth episode and that's the finale of the show. And it's just, it's weird because it's a 30 minute finale and it just seems very, it seems very unceremonious for like the type of show that this was. And it's just unfortunate. Um, It was, you know, probably just corporate meddling. Just the the typical stuff that we see in media. But, um, yeah, it it wasn't... It didn't end the best. I understand what people are saying now. um, Because before I I watched the show, uh, I was seeing a lot of stuff talking about how season four and five are rough. I don't think season four... I, I really don't think either of those seasons are like really bad but those last six episodes are particularly harder to watch um and and maybe even like some of the later arcs of of the end of the show they aren't they just aren't as strong and so they just you're not really paying attention to them as much but overall i still enjoyed the show um is very much a product of its time i talked about this a few weeks ago you know, when I mentioned that I was watching this for the first um, time, um, you know, it was the first of its kind to do like serialized storytelling. Um, granted, they couldn't really do that very well because the episodes were airing out of order. But man, they were trying. You know, they were trying to do something that Children's TV hadn't really done um, at this point in time in in the '90s, and it, it's just cool. Um, obviously there's a little bit of censorship in there, um, a lot of heavy-handed, uh, Christian overtones, um, but I, I think that's just a comic thing, because of, like, things like Nightcrawler and, you know, just the morality of mutants and all that stuff, but, um, it was a fun time, I, I had a fun time watching it, and I was really excited to just jump from there into X-Men 97, which we will talk about now. (laughs) So I watched the first three episodes last night, and then I watched uh, the next two uh, just a little bit before I started recording this episode. And damn, this this show is not fucking around. They they are not fucking around with this one. And honestly, that's really cool to see. Um, you know, X Men has kind of gotten so many weird things done to it over the years um x-men the cartoon seemed to just kind of be that thing that a lot of millennials probably more in particular uh just kind of had a fondness for and so i think when there was an announcement that this series was going to happen there was a lot of i guess rightful apprehension to this idea because you know we've seen multiple times you know someone tries to take an old property and reimagine it or reboot it, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, and it just doesn't turn out good, because they just try and, they just try and use the nostalgia factor for it, uh, to just, they they rely too much on it, and it, it just doesn't, it can't carry the show, and this, uh, is very much just a continuation of the show, people already knew, um, but for a slightly older audience, I, I will say that the censorship in it is not uh, not present at all anymore. Uh, I think the ratings get higher in, in terms of like maturity ratings because I'm pretty sure the first the first one first episode is only like barely TVPG. Um, but then uh, by the time you get to episode five, uh, there's a significantly more violence in there Uh, i also just want to mention there will be spoilers uh for what goes on in these episodes so if you haven't watched the show yet you're probably going to be disappointed so i would say turn back now Uh, but but then again i don't know why you're watching a video about this if you don't want to be spoiled anyway um but yeah so it it, it's one of those things where uh, i i feel like 
it gets hard to kind of figure out what is for who now, <laughs> you know, because the source material that they're using for this show that has this TV PG rating or higher um, is for an audience or this, the source material for that show is TV Y7, I think is what it was. You know, for kids. It, it was made for kids. So I think that's kind of like the confusing part about, you know, all these kind of franchises nowadays is just, it, it, it does get kind of weird where like all of a sudden shit just kind of gets real because the show is different now and it's aimed for a different audience. And so you can kind of see the boundaries kind of being lifted and you can see what exactly they have going on now and it's just interesting i i don't really know how i feel about it it's still just kind of confusing uh because it can just it can make it can make media very confusing in, in terms of like who is who exactly is this for you know but um i think in this case for x-men 97 I think this is very much just, like I said earlier, just a continuation of the original show. So it's for the kids in the 90s who are adults now. Um, and I think it, it does a very good job of that. I also think it does a very good job of, like, gradually increasing the maturity of the story. Because I, I want to say, like, the first... I, I would say the first three episodes felt very samey to the style of of the original show where it was just kind of like more self-contained episodes that, you know, just kind of had a quick uh, plot to go through in like 30 minutes. And it was pretty nice. And then once we got to episode four, uh, which was kind of like a weird, like it was kind of like a SpongeBob episode. Cause like half of the episode was for Jubilee and the other half was for storm. But, um, and once we get there, we kind of start seeing more through lines, you know, start to develop. Obviously, they've been there. There is an overall storyline happening in the show, but I, I think we start to see the style of storytelling for this particular show change at episode four. And then once we get to episode five, we start to see the maturity level just increase just a little bit more. Um, they, 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 they've been pushing it little by little. And by the time they get to episode five, they, I think they kind of get to where they want to get. And they might push it a little bit further if, if, if we're honest. But, um, I mean, I think even right here is, is plenty for trying to tell the story they want to for the audience that they're aiming at. But, um, yeah, there, there were a few like things I had questions on. Uh, so they don't really explain why Bishop's there in, in episode one. Um, I, I mean, they do, but they, they, it's something that to do with his gauntlet being broken and it's just like, all right. But then like, I thought about it and I, the first question that came to my mind is, well, wait, isn't the gauntlet that he wears, doesn't he need to wear that in order to stay in whatever time that he's in? Because my interpretation of, you know, the rules that it were explained by Forge, I believe, is that if you take the bracelet off, it just rips you, the universe just rips you back to where you belong. So, yeah, I, I don't really get why he could freely roam without the gauntlet. Um, yeah, I thought that part was confusing. Maybe they explained it in a different way or something or maybe i missed something but i don't know that was just a question i had thought that was weird maybe they just thought people forgot which is a thing that happens sometimes so i, I don't know maybe it's a thing people forgot um what, what was the other questions i had so the way they set up xavier's death in the end of the original show they make it seem like the shira can revive him in some but they do leave it open-ended it's not as finite as the sh as X Men ninety seven is making it seem. Um, I get it; they probably had to do it for estate purposes, and just you know, so they could keep 
the x-men operating like he needs to he needs to legally die so because that's still a thing i'm sure his money would be locked up or something um so i get that but um yeah i mean i feel like professor professor x has to show up again at some point right like i, I don't think i don't i don't think anybody's dead dead if, if i'm honest um you know if you're this far into the episode i guess i'll mention it so episode five they fucking killed gambit and magneto as he says what it appears happened and a bunch of other mutants too die um and uh they're not dead dead right they're not th- there's no way like there's no way they're just dead right like because that's just that's wild like if they actually like follow through with that that's wild um, I mean, I guess it is possible, you know, pl- pl- there's plenty of multiverses and situations and all types of craziness that goes on in these comics and movies and cartoon shows now. Um, I guess it just isn't out of the question that maybe just all these motherfuckers are dead and they're just picking off the new X-Men. And by the time this show ends, we're going to have an entirely new team of X people. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i i don't i don't fucking know but um i don't know it's it was wild it's wild um l- let's kind of go through these like one by one okay so we have the first episode which kind of reintroduces us to the friends of humanity and they're all you know super incelly now it, it is interesting like seeing the parallels that they take because because of what the what the show is it's set in the 90s still but all of the parallels are kind of drawn based off of today's stuff which um i guess is just indicative of how far we've come since those days and it's not very far it's slightly better in in certain instances but it's it's pretty samey to to what's going on in these shows in this uh in this 90s setting still which is you know a little bit disheartening so we get kind of reintroduced to those guys and it's just kind of like reintroducing us back into the fold with the new team and stuff and they're not really new well we get the new kid I, I i don't know his i don't know his comic book or his x person name or x-men name If he is an X-Men, I'm assuming he is. Um, But he's like New Jubilee, basically. He's he's the young kid who doesn't know anything going on. But I don't feel like he's as interesting. Then again, they haven't really done much with him yet. Um, So we have that going on. And then we get introduced, you know, to Magneto's whole thing in the second episode. And, you know, we get the, I think we get the trial. Yeah, the trial of Magneto is in the second episode, which is pretty cool. A uh, lot of good action. I think the action is a lot better uh, because they don't have to pull back so much. They can kind of just go for it a little bit more. And the anime, I, I will say the animation style is different than, you know, the original show, obviously. Uh, but I think they do a pr- pretty okay job of, like, kind of matching it. it it's, like, slightly matching to the original series, but not a lot it kind of it kind of gives off the marvel what if animation style but not as not as a 3d it's more flat so it's fine it's whatever a lot of the effects turn out pretty cool especially a lot of the stuff with storm but yeah so episode two just kind of serves as magneto's kind of you know, re-entry to everything, and then they nuke Storm's powers, which is like, okay, cool, I guess. Just, again, they're, they're just picking off the X-Men one by one in each of these episodes, and it kind of just gets more brutal, like, as they go on. And then you have episode three, which is like, I, I think, like, the first curveball. Well, I guess you could say, like, Storm losing her powers is, like, the first curveball that they throw at, throw at us. And then episode three gives us the freaking goblin queen which i didn't know what the fuck that was to be honest and then like the whole gene gray clone thing 
Guys, I, I don't know much about the comic history and lore of a lot of these characters, so... And I don't really care to read it beforehand. You know, if it's not, like, the the show, the original 90s show was, like, plenty of research for me. If there's something that, you know, wasn't in, that was in the comics, that was in that, you know, I probably didn't notice it. Um, yeah, it, again, it, I don't want to go that deep into it. And it kind of just, it leaves room, I think, to be surprised too because like i had no idea who the fuck goblin queen was i still think that's kind of a weird name if i'm honest given uh given just the entire situation of what happened with her it's just like okay why are you the goblin queen she calls herself the goblin queen but like why i don't know that was just kind of weird it's a comic thing i guess whatever um but yeah that was like the second curveball which was like all right Okay, so once that happened, I kind of got, like, a vibe. I was like, oh, okay. They're going to do stuff with Gene in this show, but it's going to be weirder. It's going to be weirder than before. And, yeah, sure enough, yeah, we started building on that. Because uh, episode four happens, and that's just kind of more of, like, a one-off type of situation where with, you know... Jubilee's all happy because it's her 18th birthday or whatever. And the other half is just kind of like Storm and Forge's little, uh, you know, adventure together. I just want to say the the kind of romances that just randomly develop in this show are just, I don't know, they feel weird. They felt weird in the old show. They feel weird in this show. I feel like... All of these people are just horny for whoever is in the vicinity of them at the time. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's just kind of funny because it's just like Forge and Storm and it's just like, what? Is a girl, you, you've been at his house for like 20 minutes. Why the fuck do you want to bang him already? Like, can you calm down? Like, I know you're sad because you can't do your, your Storm shit anymore, but let's, let's, let's take a step back. But... So then we go to episode five, and that's like kind of where shit hits the fan. And that's kind of where, you know, this is where like the season starts getting real, which is makes sense. I, I believe this season is 10 episodes, so we're halfway there. So it, it's time for the big things to start happening, I guess. Um, but yeah, sure enough, like Jean starts bleeding from her nose. I'm like, uh oh. Uh oh, yep, here we go. Things are starting to get weird. And then we find out freaking Cyclops is having an affair with with clone Jean. I can't remember her the name she gave herself, but freaking dude's been having an affair with her for a month. A month. A psychic affair at that. It's not even like real. It, it's like all in their head, which I thought was insane. And then Jean decides to fucking kiss Logan. Because it's just like, of course you did. Honestly, I knew she would at some point in the show. Because it's just like, it doesn't matter if her and Scott are married. Like, this girl is still going to be indecisive as fuck. And just like, you know, tease Logan or whatever. And it's just like, god damn it, I knew you would do some shit like this. And then I looked at Scott and I'm just like, well, you're both shitty. Pretty much. In different ways. So... I guess that's where we're at now. <laughs> um, so we have that going on, which was like, okay, cool. I, I, I will admit the, the day before, so yesterday, the, the, the episode premiered yesterday. And so after the episode came out, a lot of people were like tweeting and posting stories and going like, holy shit, episode five. Oh my God. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, I was so I, w I went into the episode and I was kind of expecting like a big thing to happen. And so when that happened with the affair and all that, and I was just like, oh, OK, OK, a little bit of a scandal, a little scandal happening in the X mansion. That's fun. And so I thought that was it. It was not it. <laughs> it was not it. OK, there was way more to happen uh, in the ne <laughs> in the next few minutes. Oh, my God. Um 
a, a, a giant fucking bug sentinel thing just lands on Genosha and starts just nuking the whole fucking island and just just start it just starts killing mutants and then fucking magneto and gambit f- fucking die i guess like what so random so unexpected my jaw was on the floor i did not know how to react to any of that i was i i was just befuddled i was I was shocked. I have not been that shocked by a TV show in fucking forever. And I gotta tell you, when a show manages to do stuff like that and subvert your expectations, that's great. That's a sign of a good show. That's a sign of a great show. And you know what else that's a sign of? A good showrunner. So, you know, Disney, maybe you should uh, get in contact with Bo DeMeo again. So, you know, you can give him his fucking job back. Because, uh... Yeah, it's definitely looking like, uh, if, if the numbers stay, like, the way they are right now, I, I have a feeling this dude's gonna get rehired again. I don't know why he got fired in the first place. I think, like, some of the rumors I've been reading have been saying it had to do with him having an OnlyFans, but I'm just like, why wouldn't you just ask him to, like, take it down or stop posting the direct link to it? I don't know. I feel like that's such a weird moral hill for Disney to take a stand on but disney is a weird fucking company anyway so i don't know but uh i think ultimately what they care about at the end of the day is numbers and i think um you know just based off this these five episodes i think we're in for a really fun other five and i think this is going to be a a very good a very good show for for disney to keep around for a minute I'm hoping they don't have it over its stay its welcome. But um, I think if they keep the people who started it in charge and, like, doing their thing, I think we got something real cool going on with the X-Men for the next few years. So, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. But, yeah, man. That's fucking X-Men 97. And I am shook I, I'm still processing that. Like, that's fucking... That's fucking what? Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause. Pause everything. We're talking about horny people. You know, we're talking about horny people in this episode. Can we talk about Magneto and Rogue? What? I don't know if it's the... Just the fact that in our world, it's been 30 years since we've seen these characters... Or what it is. But that just sounds gross. I don't know. It sounds it sounds gross. It looked gross when I was looking at it. I know, you know, Xavier and Magneto are drawn very ambiguous in terms of their aging. Because there's no way Magneto is that jacked and he was alive in the, you know... Well, I guess he was, what, like a child in the 30s or 40s? So you figure a dude's got to be, like, in his 60s or 70s, right? That's kind of been my assumption, is that him and Charles are, like, in their 70s or something of that sort. But, you know, my point still stands. I don't think Magneto's looking that jacked at 70 and then getting with Rogue, who has to be, like, I'm going to say early 30s. At most. We don't actually know the ages of these people. Um, Just definitely older than Jubilee. So definitely older than a high schooler. But not exactly college age either. So I would say early 30s. I don't know. It's just. It's like a double age gap. It's weird. I'm not big on age gaps. Age gaps give me kind of an ick. If it gets any longer than 10 years. Maybe. You know, even five years is probably pushing it for me. But this is that's subjective. That's that's me. But yeah, I, I thought that whole thing was weird. That was weird. I, I don't I don't I didn't know. And then and then fucking Remy saw that and he he got his feelings all hurt and it's just like, come on, leave the leave the poor man alone. He already broke his heart. But uh, yeah. Anyway. 
<laughs> so that's me gushing about X Men ninety seven for thirty minutes or something like that around that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's just what I felt like talking about tonight because I, I just need to vocalize my thoughts on this and uh, get them out there. So uh, let me know if you watched X Men ninety seven or if you're all caught up on it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on everything going on in the show down in the comments or uh, you know DM me on uh, any of the social media stuff let's talk about it i'm down to talk about x-men that sounds like a fun time uh but yeah if you are new to the channel and you like the episode uh and you're watching this on youtube uh like and subscribe over here uh if you're on spotify or apple Podcasts or any of those other places uh go ahead and uh, leave a review or rating or whatever I would appreciate that as well. You can follow the podcast on those things as well. So those, those would be appreciated as well. Um, yeah, sorry. I, I fucked up my outro, but whatever. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode. And uh, I will see you next week for another Friday Night Chill.